This video was sponsored by Power Circle Clothing and Headbusters Food Company in association with Cook Up Unlimited. Cook Up! Power Circle, we get the check! Then it's more what them feel like, you know, say so you're the baddest thing, hey, yo, run the tune! Yo, it's your boy Dennis here, yet with another vlog. We are on episode, that's right, episode 11. Make sure y'all check out that last episode we just dropped. Um, another top 10 in my opinion. Um, It was the best selling artist of all time. Bands, name it like the best of the best. Or the top selling, if you will. Um, it was some pretty interesting stuff on there. So make sure y'all go check that out and binge watch all the top 10s right now. Again, we on episode 11. So here we go. No further ado. Not gonna really over talk it. So we gonna kind of switch the pace up today. I touch on a lot of things like I said you know if y'all know me by now this is just uh, another day in the life so you already know and as you can see behind me right now which I'm pretty sure y'all watching right now we still in Chicago with it so we went down to the west side of town so we right here live in full effect in Humble Park so in Humble Park one of the dopest parts of Chicago and this is another area that kind of gets it has a certain type of uh, vibe to it you know what I'm saying it's basically um it's a uh, predominantly a Puerto Rican community and um it's cool it's full of love life good food it's a vibe out there but at the same time you know just like anywhere else you know there's a couple uh rules and parameters you have to follow you know it's a certain code of the street but that's another story for another time another subject matter another place but right now if y'all don't know by now if i haven't mentioned it yes i am from chicago but originally um my home my birthplace born and raised harvey illinois just outside of chicago that's where i'm, where I'm originally from you know and we from the south side you know what we used to say back in the neighborhood like used to be this one joke where like all the parents used to say these things back in the day and like it's just a little catchphrase out there we used to say back then like they would say oh you think you bad huh go to humble park at night and yet and still i i <laughs> you know me man i gotta keep it tall you know what i'm saying in certain neighborhoods if y'all go check like for example if y'all go to tfe tv right go to tfe tv you can check out i just dropped the episode today actually an episode dropped today and um, oh, you just go check it out, man. I ain't gonna even over talk it on that one, man. Just go check it out, man. It's a dope episode. And we actually was in Chicago in this particular episode. So if y'all know about Inglewood, then allow me to direct you that way. And um, this will just give you another twist and another spin on, on the Inglewood area, which is a Chicago area in, uh, on the south side. It's one of the many areas in Chicago that's known for a lot of this and a lot of that. But um, in, in this particular episode, I basically uh, talked about just that it's not all as bad as, you, as, they, as they put it out to be in the media sometimes. But sometimes you got to get out there and see it for yourself. And uh, going to Humble Park this was like one of them so going to Humble Park for, for me personally I mean I've been to Humble Park many many times and um, never quite actually got in like got a real taste of the culture so to speak so this is like a real taste of the culture what you're about to see the vibe of it is super dope man I love Humble Park just like the landscape everybody the people there is pretty cool even with the riffraff you know what I'm saying you know how to dodge the riffraff you might get a little eyeball in here and there if you're not familiar or just like your typical anywhere when you go to the different hoods and stuff like that. Might just get a little side eye like, man, where you from, man? We, 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 you know, it's a Chicago thing. If y'all, y'all feel me, it's, this is universal. You've seen it in a lot of different areas. Like, so, but anyway, um, this particular day, it was a nice, beautiful day out in Chicago. I believe it might have been summertime or, yeah, it was summertime. Might have been summertime. We were just coming back from out of town from somewhere. Probably L.A. or maybe Colorado. Who knows? Um, today's episode, we go to Humble Park. We still in Chicago, but we on the west side with it. Not only are we in Humble Park, it's one of the premier areas in Chicago in terms of culture, food, um, just, you know, just all the festivities around. It's like a mix between the up north area and like when you go into the Wicker Park area, which is the more more of a prime real estate and more the more expensive areas, once you get off into those areas, Humble Park basically like for me is like if you're coming from that way, it's like the entry to the West. Welcome to the West. You got to go through Humble Park first. Basically, it's a lot of cool things that goes on through there. In spite of what you hear in the media, like every hood the same. You know, everybody got their own chaos and. and, and confusion if you will you know what i'm saying violence gangs whatever blah 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 but it's not all about that it's, it's a little more to it than that it's rich in tradition it's a certain vibe it's basically pr predominantly a puerto rican community or, or or should i say it's you know it's a uh, you can just tell like if you've never been to puerto rico before and i haven't been to puerto rico before this is like our taste of puerto rico but our brown brothers you know like this is that's a vibe man so 
um, around this time, I, I frequent around there. Shouts out to my boy Drew Gold. I gotta say, shout out to Movie Dude Drew. Shouts out to the homie Popo and Cafe Racing for even inviting us out to come and cover the event as well. There was a lot of YouTubers there. I mean, the vibe was dope. I mean, I've been to many car shows before, but not quite like this. This particular car show felt like, if I can explain it in, in words, like you, you, you just got, you had to be there. Now, being me, I never been to a car show, let alone, I mean, been to a lot of car shows, but I never been to a car show in Humble Park. Never been one like that. You you know, I always thought that was rather dangerous, you know what I'm saying? Just based off experiences in the past, based off other people's testimonies and things of that nature. But for me, man, it's always love. But just to kind of bring y'all there, that's why, you know, we gonna just take a walk real quick while, you know, I know you've seen in the background, as you can see, the cars. Let's just look at the cars for a second, right? That's another thing. That's the first thing I noticed was the car selection. And for some reason, it had like, it has like some type of tradition to it. Because normally the car shows I go to, you know, you see like a lot of dunks. For those of you that call them dunks, we from Chicago, we call them sh just she box Chevys, you know. Chevys in Chicago is like hand in hand. Box Chevys, Buck 50s, Pally Coats. Yeah, that's Chicago. It, it is in its essence. That's that's Chicago, at least I, I Oh, and Jordans. Anything Jordan. But now, you know, it's a little bit more of an edge a lot. But so you usually see Chevys, uh, you might see some trucks, you know, the sounds and everything else that come with the car shows, the paint jobs. You know, different old schools, but primarily you gonna see a lot of them Chevys. Like that's just the state staple or some old, or old school cutlass of some sort. But anyway, long story short, this one was none of that at all. You might have about a couple of them. It was an I8 there that was pretty dope. Like a new, like a 2020 I8, 20, was it 2020 or 2019 I8? Either one, I'll look it up. I'll give y'all the correct one or whatever. You know me, man. We cut it out when we edit. These cars had a little bit more of a tradition to them. Now they had old schools, but it wasn't the old schools that you might be used to seeing or like what you would see at a car show car show this one right here it felt like some real old schoolish like it was it was full of tradition like they brought out the, like, the biggest barbecue grills i ever seen before and everybody was working together like on the side i mean you had like it was like i never seen a bell of chocolate I'm a, I stand about 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, I ain't that tall. I ain't that short neither. But I never seen a bag of charcoal that big and everybody was working together, assembling tables and tents and, and getting the fire going and putting the meat on, man. They had the food going. They had the music right. They riding in cart, golf carts. Got the reggaeton playing and a lot of dope music coming up out of there. From them talking about bad bunnies to all these. I'm just getting put on. Everybody. It was just like, just showing love, just speaking, everybody speaking. It was different walks of life there. This was like a taste of Puerto Rico more so. You know what I'm saying? All my, shout out to all my Baliquas.
Many car shows that you would probably see here. Actually, this is my first time coming coming uh, this particular car show. Shouts out the movie dude for throwing the alley oop for showing me this uh, place. Shouts out to all the car clubs out here. It's out here doing their thing. And so this is a little bit different for me as far as the lineup of, of the cars down here. I mean, so we used to seeing a lot of old school cars like uh, Chevy, uh, Malibu. Uh, even Chevy Novas, like anything from like Chevys to Oldsmobiles, you know what I'm saying? So for this time, seeing a lot of Toyotas, a lot of Mazdas, mainly. So I've got a chance to see a lot of different old schools out here that you probably never, well, me myself, I never seen. I didn't realize the Toyota Corollas go that far back. I seen a 79 Corolla, and I even seen one older than that. I think it was like 59. Matter of fact, speaking of the devil, here's a Toyota coming around now just to kind of give you an idea. So, you see a, a different flavor. You know what I'm saying? So, we out here. 
here. Humble Park. Let's take a walk. Back to the story, man. As y'all seeing right now, man, they had a fondness for it. it. wasn't Chevys. So just imagine taking all the box Chevys out and substituting those with every type of Mazda from old to old school to, to new. Like, Mazdas was the, was the choice. It was either Mazdas or Toyota Corollas. Right. Now, where I'm from and what I'm used to seeing, I never really seen nothing like that. But if you go to like different countries like that, most of the time they bell, they you know, they riding them. We consider them low lows. Like that's like your low key car when you bust moves in, ride, save gas, this that, and the third, right? To see somebody trick them out or even put a lot of work into it, what I saw was a little bit more beyond that. What I saw was sentimental value, and it seemed like every car kind of told a story. Like it was a certain type of monster I seen. It kind of reminded me of something. This is what really got me when I seen a certain brand of Mazda and I put it up on the screen. I can't even name the, the Mazda right now because I'm definitely not even looking behind me right now. So, but I will put it in the screen. So when you see the name of it, this particular model, matter of fact, we're going to talk about it. But the point of it all is this particular model of Mazda. My old man had one. Um, my uncle had one. I think my auntie had one of these Mazdas. It was like more on the sportier side, but in the 80s, this was like one of the cars all the dope boys, all the hustlers, all the ballers had. Like they liked Mazdas was one of them cars like outside of the BMWs and the Benzes and the Cadillacs. That's another one, another stable in Chicago. You're going to see some Cadillacs. So I seen, not only did I see this particular Mazda, but I saw the colors of the Mazda was the same exact colors. Like one of them I seen my pops had one. I think I told him about it one day. So automatically I'm looking at, you got Mazdas lined up perfectly on one side in a synchronized order, all different colors and flavors. And then no rims in the head like these little, uh, these certain motors, they sound like, uh, <laughs> they sound like the, uh, like, uh, you know, like most people going to get the 350, the big block, you know what I'm saying? And they want the big block engines so you want to hear that muscle vroom, vroom, vroom. no not these this was more like you know like you wind up the toys or like a little go-kart not even a go-kart but like uh like some type of like you <coughs> making like them little sounds like that like somebody hear like a wee whacker blowing or something like one of them sounds like <laughs> i never i don't i still don't know the method to the madness because we was gonna get into an in-depth conversation about it but i'm just explaining like this is my first time ever seeing seeing something like this but at the same time you get like oh it was a big thing like they do this nationwide they be going to florida and all type of stuff so this is a big culture and they don't just have just these old school monsters and different corolles that i've never seen before but they look like they were some cars that you would normally see like overseas somewhere like the normal car economy cars that people in the country drive like you can tell because this is what you see like when you watch documentaries or anything like that but these right here but then oh here's the other dope part that i I forgot to, I don't want to forget to mention. Um, like walking in, you can hear that traditional music of the country. You can hear, it's literally like a taste of Puerto Rico. I mean, you had the new school, which was like the reggaeton music, but then you had, of course, you got the hip hop vibe to it. That's why I said it had a hip hop vibe to it too. It was like being in New York at the same time because they had the house music playing, all the 80s music. They had Janet Jackson, I'm talking about 80s Janet, you did. They had all like all the Lisa Lisa and the, like, Lisa Lisa and all these different music that you used to hear back in the day. So it had the house music vibe to it. So like in any other car show you might hear the juke music the house music as well so you kind of heard the same thing so to substitute the hip-hop you had the reggae tone you might have heard a little bit of rap here and there but not too much but you had the traditional music of the country yeah, like that old school i'm talking about like the old heads like granddaddy now yeah they had granddaddy now old heads sitting on the corner come out there every day just holding court on the, on the, on the side like in their favorite spots just sitting there just watching all the youngsters play and all the kids everything like that you just they just telling stories and just sitting on the side just watching everything you can just tell like it's always what i like to call the three wise men they always just sitting there and a lot of old heads pass through and they are the ultimate bears fans you may have some cubs fans but bears fans you've seen some bears fans out there <laughs> i've seen a lot of that but then you know i love seeing like pride it was the real pride you saw real pride out there like they had the flags out you know, you already got the, the, the dope, the dope, uh, I don't even know what you want. It's like, uh, it's like this little thing to let you know you're going to Humble Park when you see the 
Puerto Rican flag is like a some type of statue or bridge or sign or something. And it's dope. What you finna see, what you probably seeing in the back. Y'all all know my slogan. Keep God first, stay sucker free, and by all means, get to the money.